up you guys it's Stephanie Leo and welcome to lights camera live I've got a wonderful amazing episode for you today I've got my good friend Mike Alton from the social media hat and now brand evangelist for Agora Pulse to talk to you today about blogging so let's go ahead and get started let me go ahead and switch the screen the screen real quick my goodness gracious Mike Alton say what's up Woo! All right, so if you guys are just tuning in, go ahead and let us know where you're watching from. I'm here in San Diego. Mike? I'm in St. Louis. Wait, why did you say it like that? Kind of cold and rainy and yucky. Oh, my uh, goodness. All your teeth. You know what? Um, it actually rained here in San Diego in the morning. And I was like, how fitting is that, that it rains in San Diego the day that I'm supposed to have Mike Alton on the show? And for the <laughs> How do I get reputations like this? <laughs> I was like, you guys, I met up with Mike Alton at the Midwest Digital Marketing Conference. My goodness, that was in March? Yeah. Back in March. I was in St. Louis <laughs> for four days, and it rained the entire time. The entire sad, time. Sad, sad face, sad panda. Sad, <laughs> sad panda. So if you guys are just joining us, go ahead and say hi. Say what's up. Um, oh, We've got Yvie here. Yvie. Hey. Nice to see you. Who hates to write? Who hates to write? <laughs> oh, this is so interesting. Take a, You probably don't have the Facebook Live open right now. Yeah, I can't see. But what's really interesting is that with Ecamm, I, I'm able to bring a guest on and show their... Um, I'm sorry. I'm able to put the comments on the screen. And it used to show their faces. But now with the new Facebook API update, it's not pulling in their photos. Uh-huh. How weird. More, More sad panda. Okay, stop. No. No sad panda. No sad panda. All right, you guys. Let's go ahead and get started. So today we're talking about blogging breakthroughs. And as I mentioned, I've got the homie Mike Alton here. And it's, yeah, this way. Yeah, I got it. That way. Hey, we could do a fist bump. Can you figure it out? No, other way. Nope. Other hand. Boop. Okay. All right. So for those of you who don't know Mike Alton, let me go ahead and give you a quick spiel. Mike Alton is an award-winning blogger, speaker, and author at The Social Media Hat. He's been blogging forever. He's been educating businesses and organizations on the best use of content marketing. And he was just over at the Midwest Digital Marketing Conference talking about the blogger's mindset. Now, Mike, what else am I missing? Because Mike Alton is so hot right now with all of his interviews. Maybe this other gig that I've got going on. Yeah, let, tell us more about that. I'm the brand evangelist for Agora Pulse. Yes, and what is Agora they Pulse? They make me go to Paris. Terrible, <laughs> terrible things like that. <laughs> Awful. You're all so sad for me. Oh my gosh, you were in Paris for how long? One one week, and going back in June, and. Yeah, we have an office in Paris. We're based out of France, so I have to work out of the Paris office sometimes. Is that where headquarters is? Yeah. Oh, wow. How did you land yeah. that gig? <laughs> <laughs> Blogging? Blogging, no doubt. Very cool. All right, you guys, so today we're talking about blogging breakthroughs, because if you're just like me, Whenever I see a blinking cursor, I feel personally victimized. And that is a Mean Girls reference. And I mention that because Mike Alton did not get that. Oh, sad panda. But that's okay. All right. So if you guys are wondering how you could leverage blogging to build your business and your brand, this episode is for you. So let's go ahead and dive right into it. I've got a couple of questions for you because we pre-promoted this episode in the Facebook group, and let me tell you, Mike, people were all about like, oh, I got questions. I got questions, my friend. So one of them is, Mike, is it still possible for small businesses to build their authority online with blogging right now? Yes. <laughs> I'm like, no. And, no. <laughs> and well, why is that? Because I feel like when people talk about blogging or even podcasting or live streaming, they're like, well, this person already has a blog about this topic, about this niche, why should I go ahead and get into the game? Yeah, so small businesses are actually a great example because a small business, typically their competition is also small businesses. Like take a local attorney or a plumber, somebody like that, a local restaurant. You're competing with the other businesses in your area and blog content is what can set you apart. If you do a Google search on something that's important to your brand, a topic, a keyword, uh, you're even your business name. 
are you filling up the top 10 results in a Google search or it's your competition? And I guarantee you those are written text pieces of content, whether they're pages or blog posts or FAQs or what have you. So absolutely, small businesses need to be creating content today. Okay. If not yesterday, right? <laughs> Yeah, so then, day. let okay. So blogging for like, let's say for me, I am not a blogger. I am a live streamer, and so I get away with blogging because I could repurpose my videos. So how do you get someone who isn't a writer to become a blogger and like exercise that that blogging muscle that you and I were talking right. about? <laughs> right, the blogging muscle. Well, first I'll tell you. There's nothing wrong with starting with video content. That's actually one of the two ways that I'll tell people to create blog content if you don't have a natural inclination to writing like I do. I mean, I, I'll tell people, I'll be fair, I love to write, so it's not fair to compare yourself to me. But if you don't, start with video. Start mm. with an audio interview. Start with a video interview. I mean, this is one of my favorite, favorite workflows. You start with a live video like what we're doing right now. You interview somebody else, you let them bring their game into your video and they share all kinds of information. They're dropping bombs left and right and you take that and first you've got a live video which, which has audience engagement which is great for your brand, right? Mm -hmm. Then you've got that saved video once you're done which you can leave it on Facebook, you can upload it to YouTube, you can chop it up and do little smaller segments to all these different social networks. You can download it Upload it into iMovie or whatever you've got on your computer. Strip out the audio. Now you've got a podcast with that piece of content. And then, of course, of course, of course, go to Rev.com or someplace like that. Get the transcript. Add your own introduction, your outro, and some other thoughts in there. Now you've got a great piece of blog content. And you can do our favorite trick, which is to embed the Facebook video into the blog post itself so that when people watch the Facebook video, even if it's a year later, they like they comment on it, yeah. and they're engaging with that Facebook post and putting that in the stream. You just just created like 30 pieces of content out of a one hour video now damn okay i've like i've done like 40 videos <laughs> i probably have like 40 blog posts yeah okay all right cool absolutely now again let's be fair you and i both know creating a live video isn't easy it is not. You have spent hours and hours and hours getting ready for this one-hour show. So even though all of us, we only see this one hour, you did prep and you did planning and you got the tech and all this kind of stuff going on. Now, all that stuff can be learned and can be done without having to write. Mm -hmm. So for those of you who don't like to write, this is a great solution, but it's not an easy solution. It's not a quick solution. There is no easy way. There's no shortcut mm -hmm. to creating great content your customers this is just an alternate way to do it if you don't like to write got it okay so there's live video what other writing rituals do you do in order to go ahead and create content for your blog because wait how many blog posts do you put out a week well yeah. <laughs> do you really want to know yeah i do <laughs> i want to know like what's like the mike alton level well when i first started blogging i was publishing two to three a, w a day a day I was writing two to three blog posts a day. Now, you can do that when you don't have any work to do, Very you don't true. have any clients, and you got all kinds of time. And and this is actually a great lesson, I think, for any small business. If you are trying to grow your brand, and you are trying to grow a business, you're desperate for business, and you don't have the business yet, take that time and invest it in, in creating great content, because eventually you'll get to the point where you don't have to publish as often anymore, because the organic traffic is coming in, the leads the prospects, the sales, they're coming in, and it's all based on the past content that you've created. I don't need to publish two to three times a day anymore. I don't need to publish once a week anymore if I don't want to. Yeah. I have in control of my own schedule. I usually publish once a week Okay. on my own blog. Sometimes I'm also publishing on other people's blogs with, with guest posts, but that's that's me, and that's also because, again, I like to write. So you asked about the ritual. Yes. So, what is the ritual? I'm, the rit I'm, I'm trying to see in your background if you have any candles. <laughs> so Michael Bolton. I have my Star Wars shrine behind me. No, and I've got I've got a little pork now. He's my newest addition. Oh, to cute. The, the thing. So I have time set aside every week to write. Now, when that time is will differ with everybody, but I do recommend everybody have time set aside to write. I've got two little girls, as you know, and bless their hearts. I love them. But after a Saturday morning of chasing them around the kids' museum, I am ready for them to go to bed. <laughs> 
So when they do go down for a nap, that gives me like three solid hours on a Saturday afternoon. Same thing on a Sunday afternoon. We get home from church and lunch, and boom, they're down for the rest of the afternoon, and that's that's daddy time. That's time that I get to spend writing, which I love. I can come up to my office, and no one's going to bother me. It's you know it's a weekend, so I don't have any calls or meetings or anything, and that's that's pure dedicated writing time. Yeah. The rest of you, everybody listening. You don't have to do weekends. You can do it first thing in the morning. And this is a really, really important step that you need to listen to. <clears throat> Just like exercising, it's best that you do it in the morning before you get into your day, before you start dealing with clients and all the other work that you're going to have to do. Mm. In the morning is when your mind is typically clearest, when you can be most creative, when you can turn off all the distractions, and you can set aside 30 minutes a day to write, maybe even 60 minutes, depending on how fast you want to get to where you want to go. But if you've got that time set aside to write, you'll get it done. Oh, interesting. Okay, well, I've got a question for me, and this is from Rachel Kaplan, and she says, Mike, please talk about tips for writers, since we have sometimes different problems when it comes to blogging. Tips for writers, because you have different problems when it comes to blogging. Okay, so she's, I, I, as I understand it, she's an actual writer. Yes. She's not sure how that should differ from blogging. Okay, that's interesting. Well, with every business, it's a little bit different in terms of what it is that you're going to create in your online content. And actually, Stephanie, I know we talked about this a little bit. You've got a course. Yeah. And a lot of what you teach is in that course, which means it's monetized knowledge. And you don't want to just start giving that away for free in all of your blog posts because <laughs> then nobody would need to buy your course. No. <laughs> so, and the same thing is with, with writing. If you're writing novels, you know, I've, I've written, I've worked with writers before who are creating like, you know, fictional writers and fictional characters and that kind of stuff. They can't necessarily blog that it's in their book but they can blog about the creative process because mm. i guarantee you if you're my favorite author i want to know how your mind works i want to know why you made the choices that you did to create that particular piece of content whether it's fiction nonfiction, it doesn't really matter i'm going to be interested in what you have to say and what you think outside of the book or books that you've written so that would be just one example of something that you could potentially blog about. And you could blog about events that you've got coming up or events that you've gone to, book signings. Uh, one of my favorite authors, he, he does uh, book signings, uh, Jim Butcher. He's, he's actually from Missouri, and he's got book signings going on all the time. I'm, I subscribe to his Yahoo group, and I've already had a book Wait, signing. Wait, Yahoo groups? Wait. I know. You believe that? It's crazy. I'm like, what are you still doing on a Yahoo group? But it's it's <laughs> legit. So every once in a while I get an email, Jim is in you know, Independence or he's in Chicago or whatever. I'm like, Jim, why can't you come to St. Louis? Nobody wants to come to St. Louis because it's always raining. That's what you could do as a writer is you could you could basically just share your process, share your opinions. Um, what you're going to want to do is look for topics that your target audience is interested in. Okay. Whatever that might be. And so what are some tips on trying to figure out content that your audience actually craves and getting those ideas? Do you have any pointers for that? Yeah, and so it starts with your best guess. Okay, so you're, you're going to guess, this is what I think my audience might be interested in. And then there's two things you can do. You can do some homework and use some tools like Google Keyword Planner or SEMrush and see just from a Google search perspective, is anybody actually looking for this kind of information are they interested in these kinds of topics are there other people out there that are writing about this mm -hmm. that seem to be doing well and then the other thing you can do is just create the content and see what happens you can create it on social media if you don't want to create an actual full-blown blog post you could just go to facebook or twitter and start talking about what it is that you think other people want to know about and see if anybody responds. See what kind of engagement you get, what kind of questions you get. Because if your Facebook blows up because you brought up a particular topic, it's probably something you could write about in a blog post. That's very true. And then so what are your thoughts about um, having your ideas and then vetting them with SEO? Should you not care about SEO just yet? Or should you wait that first? Well, if you're just starting, I mean, this is literally like your first day and you're listening to me and you're saying, okay, Mike, I'm going to start my blog tomorrow. Yeah, don't worry about SEO for a while because that's not the most important thing right now. The most important thing right now is let's figure out who you're talking to. Mm. Let's figure out what you're going to talk about. Let's figure out what your voice 
is going to be how you're going to present yourself, right? I mean, you know, even in video, right? You're energetic, you're, you're boom, and you're awesome, and all that kind of thing. Other people, that's not going to be their voice. Yeah. Going to be very calm and professional, and that's what they're going to talk like throughout the entire video, which is fine if that works <laughs> for them. But you have to know what that's going to be. I mean, some people are dropping F-bombs and that kind of stuff, and some people are like, no, I am not going to swear ever. I'm, that's not me. So who knows? You need to figure that out. And SEO is not something to be thinking about at that stage. Now, once you've begun to be comfortable mm -hmm. with those things that we just talked about, you're, you're writing, you've got that routine going on, you're publishing, and you're kind of starting to develop an audience, and you've got a voice going on, and you know what you're going to talk about, well, then you can start to do some homework and figure out, okay, what is this SEO thing? Uh, what should I be worrying about? How should I be publishing? What are some of the tips and tricks? That can all come later. Okay. I love all that. But we have to go back to Yahoo groups because Ken Watson was like, what the Yahoo groups? And even I was just kind of like, wait, we have to talk about this because this still exists. Can we talk about this? Yahoo groups. What? I don't understand it. 101. There are still Yahoo's still here? Yeah. Okay. Yahoo's still here. I still have a Yahoo mail account, which is my oldest mail account. I, I, I don't make the groups. Okay. So <laughs> these groups are still group. active? But there's, there's a Facebook group that's active. Actually, I know a couple. And uh, the only reason I know it is because that's how they disseminate their information. I get an email every once in a while that's a summary of the group stuff. Oh, wow. Care to, share any, care to share any Yahoo groups? Well, the only one that I know is is well. There's there's one for a company I used to work for. They used it for support, okay. internal support. I, I don't ask me why. And then Jim Butcher's fan club, his Jim Butcher's announcement. He wrote the the Dresden Files and some other books. And I don't know. Use a Facebook group. Come on, people. Use a Facebook group. <laughs> Come on. Um, well, Slash Yahoo something. groups. No Yahoo groups because that's what you're talking about. Yahoo groups. I, am, yeah. I, I do personally leverage Facebook groups for content ideas as well as ideas to ask my guests on the shows um, what they're interested in learning because there's certain things that I know, but I'm coming at a different level. Like I've I've played around with blogging every now and then, but then you have some serious writers, as you know, like Rachel Kaplan, she writes copy all the time for clients and websites and all of that stuff. And then there's some like Yvi and I were just like, what? Blogging? <laughs> So we have different questions. Well, yeah, good. Yeah. Well, if you guys have any other questions, I do have a list of prepared questions for Mike just because the social media strategist group was popping. They're like, oh, I got questions. But if you guys that are watching right now have any questions, go ahead and drop them in the comments because if you've noticed, I'm able to throw them up on the screen. And if you're wondering why, why Ecamm isn't pulling in your photo, it's just because of the whole Facebook updates. And yeah, Facebook. and all that fun stuff. All right. So the, one of the questions that we have is how can I make my writing sound more like me? And this is my own personal mm. question because as you mentioned, when I do my Facebook lives, I am just bouncing around. I'm happy. I'm like on my third cup of coffee. Uh, and then when I write my blog, it's like, here's the recap. Here, <laughs> and it's just, it, it, for me, it, it feels like a disconnect that I'm just doing it just to do it as a chore. So how do mm -hmm. I make it feel more like me? Do you feel like you have to write in a certain way? Um, I feel like when I write, because what I was trained to write in school was very professional. Mm, and then okay. working at an agency, it was just be very brief in your emails to clients. And I think mm -hmm. it's just the type of stuff that I'm, I normally write is proposals, reports. And so when I write a blog post, it's more structured that way versus how I'm talking with you right now. Right. Well, the first caveat that I got to throw out here is that how you communicate in written form or even in video form depends less on you and more on your audience. Right. If you're a very, very professional business, if you're selling medical equipment to physicians, obviously <laughs> this kind of style is probably not going to go over very well. But that said, I'm going to give you permission to throw away all those rules to forget about what you've been taught because there's no reason why you shouldn't be able to write exactly as you speak on camera. Oh, interesting. Act as though you are simply having a conversation with the reader and let it flow 
naturally. So one of the best tips that I give people all the time for a lot of different reasons is when you are writing a particular piece of content, be writing it to somebody and be writing it to somebody very specific, not just to the world, because then your language is going to be very vague and nebulous. Have somebody specific in mind, either a real person or a persona or an avatar, whatever you want to call it, a pretend person that kind of embodies your your ideal reader. So whoever it is that you want to communicate to, mm-hmm. I mean, let's say you know you want to empower women. So you know, pick a woman in your mind that that you know could really benefit from hearing you and talk to her have her have her name and her personality and her face in your mind so when you're writing you're just having a conversation just like you were emailing her and forget all the rules it doesn't have to be short screw the rules you don't have to have screw the rules <laughs> you can forget about grammar as long as it's on purpose you know <laughs> I like how you said as long as it's on purpose. I'm, I'm, I'm sure okay. Rachel Kaplan was just like, uh, what? <laughs> well, you know, good grammar rule would not be to have a single word as a sentence. You know, every sentence needs a verb and a pronoun and everything. Well, you can stop and put a single word on one line, and that's going to be super powerful if it's the right word at the right time in your writing. Mm. It breaks the rules of grammar. But it's awesome writing to do that. So don't worry about those kinds of things. Just have a natural conversation like you were emailing somebody. And what's going to happen is your audience is going to resonate with what you're saying because they're going to feel like you are talking to them, just like you were on camera, speaking to them through the camera. You're looking at the camera and you're not just like, well, I'm just talking to anybody. No, you're talking to your audience. You know them. You're seeing the comments. You know we're talking to Evie and everybody else that's watching right now. And even though they're not, we can't see them, we know they're there, we know they're listening, and we know we're trying to help them. And you can do that with written word just as easy as with video. Very true. Okay. So we've talked a lot about how to write in your own voice and just kind of throw out the rules, how to come up with ideas in terms of joining Yahoo groups, which I'm now going going to look at. Um, You know, I do find a lot of inspiration in the tweet chats, like the social media ROI. They have like a, a consistent thread that goes on and people are just always throwing these really great ideas. I'm like, oh, wow, you know, that would be awesome to expand upon that. Um, Facebook groups is another great way to get ideas, but there's this one tip that you had shared over at MDMC that I thought was brilliant. And it's so timely because there's so many updates that have been happening lately. For example, newsjacking. Can we talk about newsjacking? Can you get into a little bit about what is newsjacking and how you can leverage that to drive traffic and more readers to your blog? Absolutely. So newsjacking is two different types. Right. Uh, One type of newsjacking is there's like a pop culture thing that's happening and you're going to create a piece of normal business content and you're going to tie in to that pop culture thing. So, for instance, Justice League recently came out. Right. I've I've been, you know, watching, watching that. And so I might write, you know, 10 reasons why your marketing team needs to be like Justice League. Oh, (laughs) wow. I just love the fact that whenever you say Justice League, like, like your voice gets deeper, you're all, Justice League. <laughs> What's your superpower? I'm rich. <laughs> so, <laughs> but those posts are lame. <laughs> Don't do that. They're terrible. Oh, they are? They're so bad. Those are the worst things. Mark Schaefer had a great article last week where he talked about how I never write these kinds of posts because they're bad, but he wrote one, and it was his was brilliant. But most of us, we're going to try and we're going to fall short. So that's not the kind of newsjacking that I recommend that most people do. The kind of newsjacking that you should do is to pay attention to what's happening in your business, in your industry, in your neighborhood or whatever, and write about that. Be a journalist for your audience, for your customers, for your readers, but layer meaning on top of that. So you're not just reporting this happened, whatever this is, but you're also adding on your opinion as to, okay, why should you care? Mm. And what should you do next? You know, for those of us in the marketing realm, obviously Facebook and Cambridge Analytica, that's been big news. And plenty of people have written about not just what happened. I mean, you can go to CNN and, and The Guardian and all these other news sources to see, okay, what happened? But from a marketing perspective, what do we care? Yeah. What is this going to mean going forward? What's going to happen now with Facebook and privacy and all this kind of stuff? It's a, it's a huge issue. So those are the kinds of things that if you were in the marketing space, you could write about that. Now, 
if you want to be really successful at newsjacking, you have to understand a few things. The first thing is to understand that, according to David Meerman Scott, who writes about this a lot, there's a news cycle, right? To any kind of thing that might happen in the world, there's a point where people begin to find out about yes. this particular event. They start to tell each other. Maybe somebody writes about it. Maybe somebody that releases a press release. And as more and more people talk about it, awareness increases. And now it's hitting mainstream news. If it's a big event, like a national event, you're going to see it on CNN and MSNBC and so on. And at a certain point, awareness peaks. Now everybody knows about this particular topic. Everybody's reading about this particular event. And awareness starts to decrease. Interest starts to decrease. I've heard about it. Yeah. I'm seeing it and trending. I get it. I don't need to read any more articles about that particular topic. I am no longer interested in it. So that's the point when you do not want to publish your piece of content. Everybody's read, 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 about, uh, read about that particular topic. They don't need to know about it anymore. Yeah. So you want to be up front. You want to be the person that hears about something, recognizes it as something that's newsworthy, layers your meaning on top of that and publishes that post and gets it out at the front end of that cycle. And who do you think right now is doing a really good job with newsjacking right now? Because I have two in mind that I definitely want to name drop, name drop for sure. <laughs> well, you go first. Okay. Um, first one would be <laughs> Mitch Jackson, right? Mm, He's the streaming yep. lawyer. And so everything that's going on in terms of what's changing with Facebook and live streaming, he's usually the first one to say, this is why you should care. And he'll run with it. Like the, like the whole data privacy right now and GDPR and as live streamers, we should have guests sign a guest release appearance, which totally refreshed my memory because I was like, oh, my God, be as my little work. <laughs> <laughs> you should fill this out, right? So there's Mitch Jackson for sure, and he's just – He's always doing it, and he's so timely. I don't even know how he has time for it, right? Because as you mentioned, there's like there's a certain life cycle, life cycle that you have to follow, and you kind of have to be on that tipping point. Otherwise, mm -hmm. you're too late. And then the second person is definitely Owen Hemsath from Owen Video, because mm -hmm. not only does he do the whole news jacking, but he does it in video content form. I'm like, how do you? I think he has like four kids. Yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> like, how do you do this? And I know that he has a team, but it, if you guys are wondering about anyone that's like crushing it in terms of the news jacking sphere, um, those two for sure. But what about you, Mike? Do you have any recommendations other than you? Because you are pretty bomb. You know? <laughs> well, I'm not doing it as much as I used to. Um, and, and, and actually, I should go into why. But I, I, I want to totally agree with you with those two picks, particularly Mitch, because Mitch is doing exactly what I just said. He's not just sharing what's happened with data privacy or this, that, or the next thing. He's trying to help us understand from a legal perspective why we need to be concerned, not so much offering legal advice, but to say this is – this potentially has legal ramifications mm -hmm. that you need to be aware of. And so if you're not, you need to go talk to an attorney, which I think is great. But what I want to point out here is that there's five questions I always tell people to ask themselves when they see an event. Because this is what Mitch is going through. This is what Owen's going through, the process they're going through. They may not even realize it's probably subconscious. But the first question they ask themselves or anybody should ask themselves, when you see that something has happened, does my audience care? Yeah. Because if they don't care, don't waste your time writing about it, right? But if it seems like it's something that they will care about or maybe they should care about, well, then you know, go ahead and proceed. So the second question is, do you care? Because I'm not going to write about something I don't care about. Mm -hmm. Stuff happens with Snapchat every day. I don't write about Snapchat. I don't care about Snapchat, and I'm not going to care about it until something happens that changes in my mind th this idea that it needs to. it's not relevant to my audience, which right now it's not. So I don't write about Snapchat. The third question is, what meaning can we layer on that? Because mm -hmm. I talked about that before, right? You have to be able to do something other than just convey what's happened. Because if that's all you can do, just tweet out a link to the story that you found, the, the, the RSS feed or whatever the case might be, and let somebody else read that. But if you can add to that, then yeah, maybe you should publish something. But then the last two questions are, do I have time right now? And is now a good time because, like we said, we've got that news cycle, so we don't want to be too late in the news cycle. And even the best bloggers need 30 to 60 minutes to create a piece of content. So you have to have that kind of time available. Yeah. And if you've got a meeting in 20 minutes, don't waste your time. Don't bother. Yeah. Just tweet out a link or, or forget about it. There's going to be news stories tomorrow. 
Interesting. And P.S. By the way, George Demonis. I hope I'm saying his name right. He says, "If Mike wrote about Snapchat, I would read it." <laughs> so I think that's going to be. Okay, great. Okay, so now we have a couple of ideas in terms of a how to come up with ideas, um, sourcing the different groups, Yahoo groups. I'm still laughing about that. <laughs> Tweet chats, Facebook groups. Yeah news jacking now you've created this awesome piece of content poured your blood sweat and tears into it at least for me at least. <laughs> right um what is your your content distribution strategy for this is it one of those things where just hit publish and then uh, hope that someone's going to find it well yeah doesn't everybody do that <laughs> No, you need a checklist. You need things that you do each and every time. And I'll tell you, one of the things that's helped me tremendously over the years is that I, not only do I not just hit publish, I don't just do a tweet. I don't just do a Facebook post. I've got a list of everything, every place that I could possibly go to get my stuff out there because I want eyeballs on my content. I want to help yeah. people, but I need to get that content in front of people to help them. So I need to be everywhere. So you got to be on all the social networks. I'm sorry. You have to be on all the social networks. You don't have to spend a lot of time uh -huh. on all the social networks. I don't spend a lot of time on Google Plus anymore, which that's a sad face for me. But I'm still there. I can still publish my content to Google Plus and LinkedIn and Twitter mm -hmm. and Pinterest and, of course, Facebook and Facebook groups and on and on and on. And you can even find what I would call second and third tier Networks like Empire Avenue or Triber or some other cool places where you can find ways to leverage these different groups. We're not going to go to Yahoo groups. Sorry. <laughs> We're not going to use any Yahoo groups in my checklist. But other groups, uh, Google Plus communities, Facebook groups, and so on, have an email list. You gotta have an email list. Come on, people. Have an email list where it's you're, you're, you're offering people things to, to receive to get in your email list, become your subscribers. So that way, when you do have new content, you've got a growing list of people that know you. They're gonna be interested in what you have to say and they will read what you send them. So you've got your email list, you've got social networks, and you have one of my favorite things to do, influencers. Mm. If you can find ways to very naturally integrate influencers into your content, that's what's really going to take everything that you do and exponentially increase it because they're going to share your stuff with their audience and grow your audience that way. That's very cool. Okay. All of those I was very familiar with except Empire Avenue. What is Empire Avenue? So Empire Avenue has been around for... Gosh, I want to say eight years. I've been the member since 2012, so, and they were around obviously before then. So Empire Avenue, first and foremost, was a game. You would you would create an account, and you would connect all your social networks and that sort of thing, and other members would invest in you. And your activity on social networks and your activity on Empire Avenue would raise your stock price. And so the more people invested in you, the more you were worth. So I'm like worth like a billion dollars or something like that at <laughs> Empire Avenue because I've been there for so long. My stock price is like 1700 a share or something like that. I don't know. But it's fun. And it's, it was it was fun back in the day. What's really cool about Empire Avenue though now is that you can create missions. And you can ask people to do things in the game, and they'll earn the in-game money as a result. So I'll tell people, hey, I just wrote this new blog post, and here's a tweet about it. Go check it out. You can't actually ask them to do anything. That's you know They, they want to be legit about it. You can't ask them to share. You can't ask them to plus one or anything like that. But you can say, go to this tweet yeah. and check out my content. And what happens is dozens of people go to the tweet and they naturally click on the article and they naturally like and retweet the tweet. I haven't asked them to do that. I just showed them the tweet. So that's a great way to just, again, get some activity going. Particularly, I love doing that on individual social posts, whether Twitter, Facebook, Google+, Plus, LinkedIn, whatever your particular platform of choice is you can send a bunch of people to a post that's important to you and you can start that engagement ball rolling Get it going that way, and then let some of the organic engagement catch up. That's awesome. Okay, and I'm, <laughs> you might see me laughing all the time because I'm, I'm listening to you, but I'm also getting distracted by the comments because Ken Watson just straight said, 
Empire Avenue's still around? Dang that. That's like Yahoo Groups. <laughs> but you know, you've been around, so you know yeah. all this. Okay, so even just, okay, it's a lot of work to come up with ideas for blogging. It's a lot to put it together, make sure that it's SEO friendly. And now this whole distribution stuff, you're, you're recommending that everyone be everywhere. Um, is there a way to automate that process? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> But here's the thing. Um, there are certain things that can be automated. There are certain tools that you can use that will assist with that. Triber is a great example of, of a kind of automation that I think works really well. In other words, what you don't want is your site to automatically tweet out your content without you looking at it because heaven knows what's actually being sent, and that could get ugly pretty fast. But what you can use is a tool like Triber where – you have your new content being pulled into the system mm -hmm. and you join tribes of other people and they see your content and then they start sharing it out. So it's somewhat automated in the sense that the import is automated mm -hmm. and all the people that you can connect with, that's automated. So I'll get hundreds of extra tweets of my content just because we're in the same tribe. Brian Kramer, Mark Schaefer, they'll tweet out my stuff because they see it in Triber first and it's just easy for them to do it that way. Interesting. So I actually got the Triber website up on here, and mm -hmm. it looks like they have different categories. There's cooking, DIY, design, yeah. fashion. Um, it's been Whatever your niche as a blogger, and when I say blogger, I do mean both full-time bloggers and businesses who are happening to use blog content. I'm not a full-time blogger. I have a day job, obviously, and I do other things. So I happen to use a blog, and, and Triber is great, yeah, because you can find your niche, whatever it is. Interesting. And so is Triber one of those platforms where you have to pay to engage on it? Is it free or? It's free. There are paid options, which is great. I love, um, what do they call it? Promote post, I think, is the is the terminology they use. So once you've imported a new blog post, right, like um, tomorrow, Monday, I'll have a new article coming out about email marketing. And so once that article is out, I'm going to go into Triber, make sure it's been imported, and then I'm going to promote it. And when I promote it, there's a couple options there. I can make sure it stays at the top of the feed for the people that I've already connected with, that I'm already in tribes with. Tribes are just groups of people, right, that, that tend to like the, and write about the same things. Or I can pay a little extra, and it's like 5 bucks or 15 bucks. not a lot of money here. Sure. I can pay a little extra money and get it in front of people that aren't in my tribes. So right now my reach on Triber is like in the millions of people. Dang. Can you write and a so blog post about me? Of, <laughs> of tweets. Yeah, yeah. I did this for Jen Herman. She about went nuts because she couldn't believe what was happening. I did a book review of, of Jen Herman's Instagram for Business for Dummies, right? Mm -hmm. And so after I published it, I went into Triber. I don't know if she's watching because I can't see. Oh, she is. she is. She is. All right. She is. <laughs> so then after I published it, I went into Triber, and I made sure to add her Twitter handle in the title of the post. Oh, so wow. So that way every time somebody on Triber tweeted a link to it, it included her Twitter handle, and her phone was blowing up with mentions. This is what I call. Mentioned. This is what I call the Mike Alton effect, you guys. Yeah, if effect. you if you the have Alton not effect. been um, the recipient of the Alton effect, it is real. Because after Midwest Digital Marketing Conference, you were so gracious. You had introduced your audience to me and invited them to the Facebook group, and then all of a sudden, I got like hundreds. A request to join the group. I was like, what is happening? I was like, oh, this is me. I did a good job at the conference. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, you no. Did. well, yeah. But I was like, this is the Alton effect, which is a real hashtag, and it's definitely happening. Cool. So Triber, um, yeah, Triber is one of those where it's free, but you could definitely go ahead and pay extra for it if you want to. Is there one like content distribution platform where you're, where you're just like, for sure, I'm always going to invest in this as an ex as like an expense? for my um my budget facebook ads mm. yeah totally use facebook ads because you, when you're creating blog content that's the best content to push out to new audiences because you're not asking them to buy anything you're written something that's a solution and you can push that out to a brand new audience on facebook and get them coming into your website because then once they've become a reader now you can retarget them Right with ads, and those ads are going to be super effective when you're trying to sell something. Yes, 
Very true. And then I, I concur. I second, <laughs> I second that recommendation. That's definitely something that we're doing for one of my clients where, um, in terms of Facebook ads, the first thing that we did in, in targeting a cold audience, we tried to find the super users, the people that were most likely to mm-hmm. like, comment, and share. And you could do this in Facebook audience insights. You could oh. just say, here's a specific category about lifestyle travel. And is that audience more likely to leave a comment or share? And if they are, then I'll promote that ad to them. Like you could be interested in just travel alone, but if you're not the type of person who's going to share content, I'm not going to run an ad towards that. So I love that you bring that up. It definitely helps us. Yeah, I mean, despite us. all the negative press, I love Facebook advertising. I love Facebook ads. Yeah. And how much are you investing in terms of Facebook ads for each blog post? 20 bucks. I don't yeah. spend a lot of money on Facebook ads. I get it out there. Um, and it depends on the, on the, on the content, right? The topic. Cause I'm sometimes writing about blogging, sometimes writing about social media. Uh, Facebook is always the most successful topic for me, of course. Uh, so if I boost a Facebook post on Facebook, that works the best, particularly since I can target like Facebook page admins, which is mm. awesome. You know, so I know they've got a Facebook page. And so when I'm sharing some Facebook tips, they're going to eat that up. Yeah, I wonder if they're going to open it up where you could target um, Instagram pro- Instagram business accounts, mm, right? Because be there's yeah. your Instagram profile users, but then there's, there's your Instagram users. And oh my God, Ken Watson and George Demonis, you guys. <laughs> I know, they're chat hogs. <laughs> they're awesome. I love it. And like, I sh- I'm like, you guys, I'm totally, I'm loving what Mike has you gotta to watch say. Those guys. They will totally I know. Hijack a thread they, and they are hilarious right engine. now. And I'm just like, my goodness gracious. And I'm like, I'm kind of lucky that Ecamm isn't letting the profile show because I could only imagine what George and Ken's is like. They might turn it into cats and then all of a sudden have cat comments popping up on my screen. George and Ken, I say that with my. <laughs> okay, so here's a question. Some people want to take the shortcut when it comes to blogging. Right. Sometimes they just want to hire a third party. You could go on Fiverr for a five hundred dollar word article, or go go on Upwork. What are your thoughts on that? <laughs> and I'm laughing because I know why you're asking, and I don't want to say no, but I kind of want to say no. Um, it's you have to be careful because you want to be creating content that has your voice. Mm-hmm. that has your business values, that has your business bottom line goals in mind. And it's going to be super hard to find somebody else who can create that for you. That's not to say they're not out there, but you're probably not going to find them on Fiverr either. <laughs> so there are certainly professional copywriters out there that do amazing, amazing work. And given some time and some budget, they can create that for you. So that is always an option for any business. If you just don't like to write, but you're willing to pony up some cash to have somebody else do that for you, then absolutely. Just understand, yeah, it's not going to be Fiverr. That's not going to be good content at all. That's going to be – you're wasting your time. And more often than not, if you try to hire someone, like let's say from Fiverr. Oh, God. No, no, no. Actually, not disrespecting Fiverr or anything. Yeah. Disclaimer. I am not throwing Fiverr underneath the bus. <laughs> <laughs> let's just say you, you do hire someone um, to hire your content or to write your content. How do you know that it's not actually plagiarized? How do you know that they're not pulling it from somewhere else and then – now people are like, wait a second, I know I read this before and it was written by somebody else. It's something to be mindful of. Yeah, you can uh, do some simple Google searches, You know, highlight entire sentences and paragraphs and do some Google searches. And actually, nine times out of ten, that'll, that'll pull up a result if it has been plagiarized. And then there's also a service called Copyscape, I want to say, mm. that will scan it and try to help you determine whether or not it's legit. Interesting. Okay, cool. I just want to, for some, I want to test something out real quick because Jenny Jacobs Burke just asked a question, um, huh? not related to what we're talking about, but her picture popped up in the comment. So her what? question was, Stephanie, Stephanie Leo, are you still using OBS or something else? I'm using mm-hmm. Ecamm, but I find it very interesting, Jenny, that your photo popped up, and I wonder if it has to do with privacy settings. I bet. Right? I bet that's got to be it. Okay. All righty. Okay, cool. So <laughs> now I'm going back to the, to the question of the third party. All right, just be very mindful of that. You could use things like Copyscape, you said? Yep. Okay, got it. All right, 
Mike, you have been absolutely amazing. George and Ken, you guys are hilarious. <laughs> I mean, Saying that with gritted teeth. So no, it's, no, 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 it's funny. They're, they're, they're good. It's just that whenever, whenever a new comment pops up, which, by the way, you guys, I totally love comments, I get the little boop. It, ha- it happens in my headphones. I'm like, what is that? What is that? I'm like, oh, it's Ken. It's Rachel. It's Evie. Cool. Um, so we wanted to go ahead and give you, all of our viewers, a nice little giveaway. We said five. Was that five? We said five? Oh, yeah. Yeah. You yeah feeling feeling five? 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 Okay, cool. <laughs> Don't say no. Psst. Don't say no. Okay. So we want to go ahead and um, give you guys this opportunity for Mike Alton's amazing giveaway and mike can you can you go ahead and just give them a quick spiel on what it is yeah so i have a blogging planner it's designed to help anybody uh track their content come up with content to write for the whole year and track things like who you're talking about in terms of influencers uh where you're going to get ideas what you're going to publish on given weekday month so that you can have a calendar of topics and be on point with what you're talking about, both in your written content and your social content. And it's uh, what we call a, a digital downloadable printable. So in other words, I'm going to send you a series of PDF files that you can print. Now, when you print it out, it'll look like this. So you're not going to get this. This is my copy. I printed it. You can't have it. But you'll get these pages that you can print out. So like here's influencer planning, one of my favorite pages in the whole thing, where you can put their name, their email, their audience, what plans you have for them. You can track your usernames and passwords, all the affiliate programs that you're in, all that's in here. There's over 40 worksheets in there. Plus, not done yet. Now you're going to get a bonus. You're going to get a guide on how to use that. And you're going to get my article that's exclusive to my planner customers. This is a paid product, by the way. I'm not just, this isn't just some ebook that I give away on my site. Yeah. You're going to get uh, how to make 2018 your best year yet. Mm. And you're going to get some additional bonus worksheets. So all that to the first five. First five. Okay. People who do what? Who leave the comment subscribe. And when you say subscribe, you're also opting in to get Robo Steph, my little messenger bot, to come out and notify you when the next episode comes up. So the first five to leave the comment subscribe if you want to go ahead and get Mike Alton's blogging planner and his exclusive article, go ahead and leave those comments now. Um, and it's funny because right now they're all talking planners, planners. There's always like a 10 second delay. All right, there's Holly. Oh, wait. Holly says that she already has your planner and it's great. So she's she wants another one. So there's Holly, there's Yay, Evie, Holly. there's Gary, and I need two more. Ken, Ken, <laughs> one more. Boom, 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 boom. Gary, <laughs> Gary. All right, cool. All right, I just said that everyone's name. You now know that you're a winner. Um, <laughs> <laughs> winner, winner, chicken dinner. <laughs> yes. So thank you to the first five that went ahead and congratulations. You're going to get an awesome planner and Mike, I'll give you their contact info so that you could go ahead and connect with them. Cool. You guys will get that by tomorrow. Yay. And then for everyone else that's leaving the comment, subscribe, you will get notified the next time that we go live here on lights camera live. Um, as it feels like we're going to go ahead and start wrapping up. Cause I can't believe it's already been 50 minutes. Like Mike, <laughs> isn't it the craziest thing? Yeah. It just it flies by, which means now I have an an almost hour long live broadcast, which I'm going to turn into a hundred pieces of content. No kidding! I mean, you, you know how many words we've created in this one hour live video? No, see, you say words. I'm a live streamer, and I'm very, <laughs> I'm very visual when I talk, and I do a lot of this. That's not a lot of words. <laughs> All right, you guys, so if you have any last-minute questions about blogging, go ahead and drop them in the comments now. Um, Mike, you've been so gracious in doing all of these knowledge bombs. Where is the next place that you're going to be speaking at? Because you're like Mike Alton so hot right now. <laughs> and see, now i got to go watch the movie so I understand these references. Because <laughs> I, I feel so antiquated. Me and my Yahoo groups, we don't watch movies, I guess. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> next up, I have a uh, webinar with Buzz. Buzzstream. Buzzstream. Okay, cool. Buzz, no. Buzzsumo. 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 I get those. I can't stop confusing those in my brain. Buzzstream is an outreach program. Buzzsumo is an awesome social analytics program. And I spent all last week testing Buzzstream and it keeps in my brain. So I have a webinar Wednesday morning with 
Buzz Sumo, and I'll share details about that uh, next week when when Susan gives them to me. Awesome, cool beans. Okay, so let's see here. Um, no other questions so far now, but we've had a bunch of new people jump in and subscribe. I just want to give a shout out to Lottie because you're a new name. I have not seen that name before, so it's always nice to get new <laughs> folks in here. And Michael Kinlow, what up, what up? Welcome to the show. So great to have you here. And there needs to be like some type of point system for whoever leaves the most comments because right now it's George and Ken. <laughs> See, now you're just encouraging them. <laughs> hey, it helps with my engagement and that Facebook algorithm. <laughs> All right, you guys. Well, thank you so much for your time. Mike, you've been absolutely amazing. We'll go ahead and get those winners out to you. If you guys want to learn more about Mike, Mike, do you want me to go ahead and shoot them over to the social hat or Agora? What? Go to agorapulse.com because that's Agora. where all my love is right now. Mm-hmm. I'm, even, I'm even on point with my brand colors. Yeah, you are. Which, by the way, you guys, I am also messing around with Agora Pulse. It's been super helpful. And I, I like it because I get inbox zero with all of the notifications. Yeah. Doesn't that make you feel good? Yes. And I have a ton of clients. And I would say on average for each client, there's probably like six social media channels. So that's a lot. So for Agora Pulse, do you, are you guys putting out new blog posts pretty much weekly or what's up? Oh, yeah. Because they have – we've got a regular blog – where we're just talking about you know normal social media type things. And then we also have the Social Media Lab, which is super cool. Scott and the gang, they'll dive deep into questions like how many hashtags should you include on an Instagram post, right? Or how often should you reshare evergreen content? Mm-hmm. And we do experiments. And we look at the data and we try to figure out, okay, did, you know, was there an answer? Was there a conclusion? Should we do this? Should we not do this? Like one of the really cool things that they found is that if you're doing tweets – it's almost better usually to do a link preview on a tweet rather than attach an image, which is kind of against what we would do on Facebook. On Facebook, you would want to post an image and have a link in, in the caption. So those are the really cool conclusions and tests that they're doing on the social media lab, which is basically a separate blog. Oh, fun. Yeah, where is the social media lab? Because I just I tried to look for it under resources, but then I found myself on free social media marketing tools. I was like, wait a second, what is that? Wait, where is social media lab? Oh, what is the URL for that? I'd have to Google it. I don't have it memorized. I think it's social lab. Uh, let's see here. Goro. I like the Facebook oh, barometer. This is legit. For those of you oh, yeah. who are, I mean, we're in Q2 now. So if you haven't done a social media audit report for your clients, here's something that you could go ahead and use. Yeah, it's agorapulse.com forward slash social hyphen media hyphen lab. Oh, my goodness. Social hyphen. Sorry. <laughs> social hyphen what social hyphen media hyphen lab so it's a girlpulse.com social media lab with hyphens in between in between the words okay cool so are you struggling to get business value out of your social media efforts i mean here's oh here's all of the experiments this is legit i've never seen this before yeah listen to the podcast or subscribe to the blog who's um who's writing for the experiments Scott. so scott Ayers. Uh, runs the experiments, and then he works with uh, our rich media guy, Richard, Richard, the rich media guy, who uh, he'll help do uh, the audio for the podcast. Uh, and then sometimes they bring people on. Like I helped create an experiment. Ian Anderson Gray helped create an experiment. I think Jen Herman told them how to do an experiment. Said, hey, do this, and they did it. So they're willing to work with people too. Very cool. Wow, I'm definitely going to have to check that out and geek out over it. So awesome, cool beans. And then, you know what, I just want to give a shout-out to Nick who was interested in the whole news jacking discussion mm-hmm. that you and I just had. Cause Nick, I think Nick just did a Facebook live as, as well. Cause Ross brand had promoted his show too. Um, oh, okay. I think Nick probably at the 20 minute mark is when we started talking about news jacking. So, um, definitely check that out when you're, whenever you had a chance. All right, you guys, Mike, this has been amazing. You're awesome. Thank you so much <laughs> for, for, me. for geeking out with me. You will, have to um, watch Mean Girls and Zoolander yeah. to get all of the references in, today, <laughs> in today's episode. <laughs> so I, have, because... I have homework. I'm not supposed to have homework after you have a while. homework. This is Netflix homework. And then, <laughs> and then Ken and I, we're going to go check out Yahoo groups and try to create a Yahoo email. I think I got the better end of that stick. <laughs> <laughs> all right, you guys. Thank you so much for hanging out with us. We'll catch up with you later. Take care. Bye. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye.